Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Azathen. Or another way of saying that intro is, what's up everybody, it's A to the Zothan Azathen here, and I'm going to show you an episode of Broken Alliances. Yes, an amazing game. Let's go ahead and take this fog of war off, and I'm going to explain to you very briefly the insanity that you're seeing on this mini-map. Now, this game supports 12 players, and I would suggest playing it with no less than that, because, as we're going to see... Almost every base is going to be taken. There are 12 players, and each player is going to control three bases in the beginning. The setting that the host did for this one looks like this is not taken. I wonder what's supposed to be here, because this looks interesting. Anyway, it's been a while since, literally two years since I played this map. So, I'm going to explain how this map works. What you want to do is, let's see if I can reset my camera. No, no, nothing. Okay. Ah, it sucks. Anyway, so, um, it's sort of like the War of the Twelve Kingdoms that I did, except more ridiculous. As you can see, this map is just absolutely massive. There are bases everywhere, and the setting that this guy did mixes them all up. Plus, you get a random hero, you get random bases, and the bases are not, like, for example, like Lycanthrope. I'm pretty sure that would be in the bottom left undeady corner over here normally. And then you've got, like, smaller... Uh, everything's themed generally in an area normally this would be like a Rohan kind of area it would be the area that has horses but I spawn as the undead here I have the undead base uh, Kalen which is kind of a human nice relaxed kind of base I want to say uh, don't even know what's supposed to be here but I know that I'm here here we are and Mel fourth which is sort of a night elf base which if I'm not wrong would be over here as you can see totally mixed up just throws everything all around the place 12 players let's go ahead and start this map because it is a long ass game and we are gonna be doing it in three parts uh, unfortunately sorry guys it's a huge huge game now uh, this is going to be a little bit harder to keep track of, given the fact that I cannot zoom the camera out any... I... Yay, I can do that. Cool, get some better angles. Cool. I'm going to make sure I, I make good use of this. So we can see that my... I'm going to go ahead and teleport out of here. I'm like, wow, I don't really know what's going on. The filthy rat messing around. I think, well, bottom left base, I can totally be protected, right? And then I think, huh... Well, there's not really that many cool things that I can build here. Uh, Carnash, we're going to see Sned, or Sred, do a lot of very close. By the way, guys, I am not going to edit this out. I'm going to just go ahead and let this person make themselves look like an asshole. I do not in any way support Green and his very racist language. That is inappropriate. Uh, the Sun King is going to be gray let's go ahead and just look at this shred is light blue the sun king is gray i'm pink yeah manly pink filthy rat is green and he's a filthy rat yamamoto yamamoto elite yeah you got me a mamato cannon is gonna be orange wrath underscore 83 cool is going to be yellow nice one is teal mystery 004 is gonna be blue and taken two is gonna be red He's obviously a huge fan of that movie. Shred already kind of moving in. Going to do some poking, prodding. You see, it's very easy to see what is moving across the map. But it's just really hard to see what these bases are. Because it's just brown. Like, it's just this, this dull, blotchy brown color on the map when it's unhooked. And it looks like the Sun King going to be go ahead and gathering up his forces very quickly. He's not going to waste any time. Shred is still... I noticed everyone did this. Everyone immediately got artillery to break down towers and stuff. I haven't played in so long, and I guess that's the new cool thing to do. So I just sort of start building necromancers, some death knights, some zombies. Now, let's go ahead and uh, explain how this works on this map. You can see that in the necromancer description there, it says manpower cost is 300. Your manpower cost is that mana bar, or the mana on your building so bam comes out 300 mana cost suddenly our building is 300 mana down it's going to start slowly regenerating itself the reason they do this is so that you can't find a base that has a really strong unit and then just 
be like, well, I want 15 of these to spawn every time. By the way, this is a spawn-based game, like I said, like War of the Twelve Kingdoms, the only difference is you choose what bases you want to spawn things, and you go ahead and build those units from those bases. I am kind of lucky in the fact that I have this one here, and then just, like, right down the road is Dalmorte. Green already picking a fight with Blue, saying I want that tower, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Dang, Grash is doing chaos damage. But, oh, Blue with the vampires. He's going to be turning other things into vampires. What's this? Teal! God, everyone went fucking siege stuff. And Blue with the Murloc Nightcrawlers looking awesome. Orange poking, no, out of his own base. Here I am, I don't really know what's going on, except for the fact that, oh, there is a friggin' catapult attacking my guard tower already. Well, that's fine. Green, not gonna give up the fight, he's gonna keep poking. Sred, just uh, sitting there, doesn't really know what he's supposed to do right now. And it looks like OJ is gonna go ahead and try to buy Hillsboro, but he doesn't have any money. Oh, it's gonna be difficult. Red, just massing up, he's got some ice archers, he's got a beautiful mountain king, border guardian, I love... The textures on some of these guys, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and pause there and look at this guy, because he is a sexy, sexy model. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead and appreciate that guy. All right. Starting the map up again. As you can see, we're already at four minutes, and it hasn't even budged. There's no yellow on the replay screen. And I'm like, God, just get out of here with your, with your catapults. Pissing me off. So what they've done is they've selected one of their buildings, and I believe it's this one right here, Torenia, and he's building Torin and Catapults. That's what he's going to go with. It'll spawn Baby Torin naturally. Every building spawns a basic unit that coincides with whatever theme they are. So this Torin Totem is going to spawn Baby Torins. He has put money into getting Torins and Catapults. Meanwhile, I keep trying to push forward, and I finally have enough men to start doing so. My hero... The Ice Mage has an ability you just saw there where she shoots out these little blasts of ice all around her. It's sort of a Nova centered on her. She also has a line attack ability, which will do some damage, and then freeze all units in a line. Uh, frost armor, and then her final ability is much like the... Oh, what's it called? The Witch Doctor. There we go. It looks like Yellow also massing up a pretty scary force. OJ is all over the place, sending out scouts, trying to see things going on. But... Oh, we can see here, your heroes start out with a health ward, and you can also purchase them. I'll show you that later. But you always want to target on those health wards because this game is such massive fights that that percentage healing... And I'm trying to catch some of these catapults. I'm just so angry at them. Oh, Fucking catapults, man. Break it. Break it. Yeah, I'm going to break that one. Anyway, that percentage healing over a large army is a really, really hard to do. Blue poking in, but nope, green's going to catch him. Almost gets the hero kill. All of Orange's scouts. Man, Orange actually doing a really smart thing here. You have to know what is where. Oh, dark green. Albert Wesker trying to poke in, but he's not going to see anything. And a big army of these mercenaries coming out from yellow. And uh, getting these outlaws. Very cool. They sort of look like they have a Tyrael skin, don't they? Yeah, they do. They're awesome looking, is what they are. One of the things I still love about Warcraft 3, you know, instead of, say, Starcraft 2 at this point... Oh my god, is there a fight going on? No, no, there's nothing going on. As opposed to Starcraft 2 is the fact that the map editor was so much better. Just, in general, it was better. You had the ability to make all of these custom units, and Azeroth Wars has many, many custom units skins and stuff like that. Teal, once again, just does not leave me alone all game, which I guess I can be thankful for. Oh my god, and it looks like the Sun King is getting attacked by Yellow. So much damage going on. He, ve he may very well lose this. And these Elder Windigos are a great investment. They are taking less damage from both piercing and magic damage towers. So they're a really good tanky unit. And, uh... Man, the, oh, these Disciples of Zulgash are really strong in large groups. We're going to see Gray try to filter into his base. Oh, but Yellow is not going to give up. And meanwhile, I managed to drive off Teal again. I'm going for just pretty much pure undead. I'm going to go Death Knights, Necromancers, and then when I have enough money, I'm going to start... Oh, we can see Orange breaking into my base. Luckily, all my towers are up currently... And, oh, these Chaos Assassins do so much damage. 
Then out and fight the filthy rat. I don't even know what the filthy rat is doing. Oh, he's saying, come out and fight me. Shut up, Red. That's not how this game works. Meanwhile, Shred is going to manage to finally break into the base of the nice one and take this. The nice one is right below my two bases. I've got one there and one there, and he's just kind of bunkered up there. Orange with Maktha. In the traditions of the Maktha, I hail thee. And yellow is going to get pushed out. Awesome job bringing these wizards here. Gray has a base here, so he's able to quickly reinforce, and he's going to start making necromancers. And red, trying to poke and prod and get these units to come out, but they are set on hold position, so no, they are not set on hold position, so red may actually get a few free kills here. And an attack from blue coming in, he's trying to push green out, oh god. Oh my god, blue tries to activate his run ability to get out of there, but no, green snatches it up, green. Ooh, green. Looking like he is very happy with how things are turning out. War pigs. Those things are beautiful. I want war pigs. Like gray, he's gonna keep rallying units over to this base to keep himself alive. Meanwhile, light blue is just sort of getting some free, free stuff. No one's gonna fight him. Cause we're all stacked in the middle. That's, that's the problem. Got a bit of an army moving out. But once again, Teal, with all the catapults in the world, is going to be assaulting my front base. And I, I kind of have a suspicion that he's going to do this, or is this not this time? I don't remember. We'll see. And Green trying to push on Blue again, but nope, the Dark Spire is not going to fall quite yet. <laughs> Dang Grash, better be careful. Oh, that's right. I move over here, and then I get. And then I get, yes. There's a Death Knight trap back here. Now, where is the fighting going on? That's the question. Lots of woe. Lots of woe here. Those bodies are massive. <laughs> it must be the Murloc mutants, because, damn, they are big. So you can see, it looks like Blue is just really powering into Murlockia. He's getting these Murloc mutants, which are excellent melee units. Uh, that's one of the bonuses of these Death Knights, by the way, is they do magic damage. So most melee units you're going to find that people use are heavy armored. And yeah, so magic is a really good counter against that. Let's see, what do these take extra damage from? Hero, magic. So they take 100% from magic. So it's it would be an okay fight to try to throw those, <laughs> throw those against uh, my Death Knights. That would go in favor for him. Now, what are we seeing over here from Yellow? Nope, nope, Gray's just still holding on and Yellow wants to keep pushing him. He is, he is pissed off at Gray for some reason. And Orange coming down here to try to make a bit of a stop. He's saying, hey, Shred, could you not take all the bases? So that'd be great. Tajan the Mighty. Trajan the Mighty. King of Melania. Come on, Green. Red. Red, I don't even know. Okay, so let's just be clear here. Red is the one who hosted the game as far as I know. Saying, light blue, let me out. I'm sorry I attacked. Just let me leave, you ass. You shit ass. Oh my god, this fight is not going that well for yellow. We can see Disciples of Zulgash looking very strong. And they are not dying. Oh. And he's wisely using... God, man, that is some mean stuff right there. You got the slow, and then you've got the curse. So your units are attacking slower, and they're missing more often. That is insult to injury. And another push from Teal coming in. He is just waiting there. Where the hell? Oh, that's right. I'm way out of position. I find this base, and I go, <gasps> Player 12? Look at all these free units. This is going to be awesome. And they're all heavy armored. Well, the weak ones aren't heavy armored, but the mercenaries are heavy armored, so I'm going to get some... Oh, God, no, that is a lot of catapults. Sweet, holy. Let's see, what is my reaction time on this before things actually start moving? Pretty slow. Oh, my God. Oh, God, what is this? Light blue getting caught in position by Orange, who is very upset. Oh, is he going to nab the hero? Come on. No, Orange, push it. Ugh, light blue, Shred with lots of mobile, mobile artillery, and Albert Wesker. 
has left the game. That was our dark green player here, and he's just decided I'm done. Meanwhile, I'm trying to run back. I think I teleported my hero. Did I? Is the question. Come on. Where are you? Okay, so your heroes do have an ability, and it looks like a horn, and you click on the horn, and it will teleport you to a friendly base like this and it'll just like pop you right in there and oh we see that I'm just I'm taking a group of footmen and I'm just bypassing the front lines to go ahead and try to attack these because these are really annoying anyway you can teleport to your base immediately it is not a town portal as it will not bring your whole army with you but it is for your hero your hero can get there and try to uh, save old Merlachia new Merlachia Teal saying, oh god, I am just so done with this. And I really want to catch Nuada. Oh, dude, Prince Nuada. What? I wonder if that's a reference to Hellboy. Prince Nuada, right? That was that was the name of that guy. I'm not crazy. The guy who looked like he was played by Brad Pitt? Yeah. Oh, no, Tom Cruise. I'm thinking Tom Cruise. That guy looked a lot like Tom Cruise. And finally, it looks like Green is actually going to take down the Dark Spire of Blue. But Blue, oh god, Blue is going to come in here and he's going to kill all Dark Green's units so he's getting some feed. We are going to see so much just like useless attacks from me against Teal. Not useless, I'm slowly wearing him down. But the problem with this map is, no, that's not positive. This game's long. We got to keep it running while I, while I talk. The problem with this game is the more you throw units at an enemy, you're thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm working them down. They have less. But you got to remember, now they can afford to buy more spawns and buy more upgrades and what is this a goblin shredder key looks like yellow is going for a goblin shredder oh and green almost catches him out of position but that's fine yellow got some spiders up here spiders oh tarugas 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 is spawning spiders apparently that's awesome and a fight over here oh my god orange versus light blue light blue has all of these outlaws oh man they are I feel like the outlaws should be used to flank magic uh, casters and stuff like that, like flank the back of an army. Meanwhile, I'm going to come in. It's going to be sort of an abortive attack, but I feel like I have the advantage because my guys do magic damage against these horn, and it's awesome. Uh, let's keep an eye on both these fights here. Look at these health bars. Oh my god, and Light Blue is wisely just focusing down these towers. He understands I might lose my army, I might lose some men. But, at the end of the day, these towers are what end up being a real pain in the ass to assault. And we can see, dropping that healing ward there, I should have hit that quicker. I have not, as of yet, built any siege whatsoever. But I do have tons and tons of skeleton warriors, and once you upgrade them, they actually become a great meat shield. I think they're only worth, like, 5 gold apiece, maybe? instead of the 15 or 10 that most units are worth but you are summoning two and they can die kinda easily so you have to watch out I feel like I might be feeding teal here let's see what he's got 285 no they're worth one. Oh, that's so good to know okay I feel less bad about my use of skeletons now but I am however driven away and it looks like orange also receives a stay of execution he's gonna be alive for a little bit longer this chaos assassin being like what do you do need from me I can do anything I am a very strong <laughs> what the which one of you oh it must be you okay <laughs> uh you can upgrade your units to captains certain units can be increased to captains and they will they will get a an aura oddly enough and oh my god yellow getting goblin shredders to go ahead and steal blue's base oh i i know green wanted that did green get chased out i can only assume that he did because there's bodies from a recent fight Anything else going on? Red? No. Red's got Buala. Balua. Balua. Bahama. Come on, pretty mama. And he's got this base here, which is where the most of his most of his stuff is coming from. The Sasquatches, the Ice Archers, and the Border Guardians. And Gray! It looks like Gray is... Oh, he might pick a fight with somebody pretty soon. And this is Red's other base right here. We see down here... Not much going on. So, 17 minutes into the game, we're going to speed up the times two, see if we can catch some stuff. Oh, I catch Teal out of position, and he's forced to run back very, very quickly because, oh god, these catapults. The catapults have heavy armor, and my guys are doing extra damage. Yeah, get one, get two, get cut! Oh, get cut, baby. 
Slowing it down, slowing it down. Slowing it down, slowing it down. Yellow has to worry about this army from Gray. Gray is getting a little impatient. You gotta remember, guys, there's a fine balance between being able to build up and mass up and then not being involved in fights for too long because you will find yourself just with no money. You will have no money. Great, you've got a great army. Uh, it's bigger than your opponents, but it's it's not as effective. You have more units, but they're weak basic units. Oh, and he's getting a lot of money there by dropping this uh, dispel thing that they have. Nuwata holding on just barely. Lord of the Forest drives the unbad, undead back once time, but he's using ghouls to do so. I feel it's a bit hypocritical. And Gray, oh, is Gray gonna catch Yellow out of position for a good engagement? Yellow, you gotta move them all in. Yellow, come on. These Goblin Shredders might be the only thing to keep you alive. And once again, slow, that curse, the mischance, it's so brutal. And Yellow's gonna wisely pull all his units and force them to walk through at first, so then, then then bring them down so that you have a better concave. I don't know why these are sitting there. They shouldn't be. And uh, it looks like... Oh my god, Orange, Orange fight! Oh god, Orange is actually kind of holding his own, I want to say? But again, two massive fights going around. These Goblin Shredders are actually... Wow, they're the only reason... Oh no, 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 he's gonna lose his hero. He gets surrounded by those disciples of... Uh, gosh! Oh, and uses his horn ability to get out of there, turns you invulnerable, gets you out of dodge always try to save your hero if you can and meanwhile orange has indeed received a stay of execution blue blue what are you doing blue it looks like who got the base who got the base i don't know oh and that's another thing when you destroy an enemy base you have the option to capture it and start producing units from it it might have a unit that meshes well with your composition or you have the option to burn it and loot it for money and then use that money on spawns you know you like and upgrades you know you need we're going to see that green has this base here which is probably one of the most sought after bases in the game it produces shamans and shamans give bloodlust and bloodlust was really what I was looking forward to on my units because the death knights have lifesteal they do magic damage and lifesteal meaning that if I can give them bloodlust uh, they will be attacking even quicker and uh, healing themselves even faster it's just it's an awesome ability meanwhile teal swing in here and uh, I manage to pincer him I make it look like there's almost nothing left in here and then I go ahead and swing these death knights around to try to get all of these catapults I am absolutely exhausted from fighting him and it looks like gray has cleaned up he's taken the ground he's forced yellow back into his base in yellow feeling a little frightened and I get a good concave here I managed to block off everything through the trees uh, I drop the healing ward so that my death knights are yeah look at that hitting and healing baby hit and heal get cut Oh, and here we go. I'm like, no, no. All of these die. All of these catapults. Just fuck this catapult in particular. And it's dead. Our force is under attack. Yes, because our guys run after everything. Because they're just obsessed with it. Oh, Nuada. Oh, you were so close to death, baby. Baby doll. Baby turn the lights down low. Put some music on that's soft and... For the horde, <laughs> and light blue is going to end up cra clashing one more time with orange, and both of these guys are just focusing on building units rather than getting upgrades. I don't agree with that. Well, I guess I can't actually say that because I'm only just now building my battle forge. By the way, that's what you have to do. You produce a peasant from here, and then you can start building stuff like the supply center, which will offer you uh, totems, which will restore your mana or your health, and then you go ahead and build the battle forge. And the Battle Forge will also let you upgrade all of your units. And, uh, oh god, we see green with these greater spirit wolves. They have divine, divine armor. So that means they only take 60% damage from most things and 100% from chaos. And it might seem like they're not that strong of a melee unit, but they very, very much are. Especially with that roar ability increasing everyone's damage. Very scary. So I go ahead and I freeze a bunch of these units. And I see green start to think, well, maybe I'll run away. And I decide, no, no, we can't have any of that. I swing these units around and I go ahead and I trap them in there. Meanwhile, ooh, looks like a bit of a skirmish happened here, but 
<laughs> Orange is actually pushing light blue back. Now, I want to explain something. When I was playing the game, my understanding of it was teal was scary, red and blue were fighting nonstop, um, light blue was winning everything, and yellow was super scary. I didn't even know about gray and green whatsoever, and they've been two of the most active, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's a pretty good spot to be in. Uh, Infernal Rock Golem. I should mention that. These casters that Gray has been building turn into Infernal Rock Golems. They are immune to magic damage. Very scary. They have 1,200 health. Transformation isn't permanent, but I think they also have... It looks like Immolation, if I'm not wrong. So they are really scary to fight in a one-on-one. -on -one. I would not want to do that. Looks like this is where most of the action at. We see a little bit of a possible conflict here between light blue and orange. Uh, not really seeing too much else going on on the map at the moment. Do we still have everyone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine players still left in the game, mate. And I have no idea why I've got Australian. It's just a thing. I paused. I was like, oh no, am I lagging? No, oh, crikey, I'm lagging. And then I realized, well, bugger. I'm uh, not playing online, so that's not possible. Oh, yes! Possessing a bunch of Grey's units and turning them into wolves for his army. The Greater Shadow Wolves also have Divine Armor, it looks like, and are wrecking the back lines of Grey. Yes, these towers are still up, and you think, oh god, it looks like Yellow's about to break. No, Yellow is fine. If Grey doesn't reinforce Yellow, Grey should be reinforcing. He could end this fight if he does. Meanwhile, I want to push in and kill this so badly. Teal, you have been a thorn in my side all game, and even though, nice one, you are... Seem like an excellent player, you're very good. Uh, you scared the crap out of me with your catapults, so I'm feeling a little vindictive. And Yellow just holding on by the skin of his teeth. Now has to worry about a brand new, fresh, big, scary army. Oh god, these shifters are the ones I was talking about. They do chaos damage normally. Oh, that is so crazy. They, they are very weak, it seems, in their normal form, except for that chaos damage. But the ability to turn into that Infernal Golem is absolutely insane. Now, I'm going to have an extra group of, we're going to call them uh, extra or non-essential units in uh, Control Group 5 that are going to be focusing down watchtowers because I'm really tired of seeing those towers. And Red, Red, Red finally making the giant push into Murlachia. Woo! And Gray! Oh, how is this possible? How is this a thing? When I attacked Yellow, he had that base, like, complete- I don't even- Oh, and more skeletons going down, and meanwhile, Blue, Blue holding him in the choke point. Oh my god, Blue intercepts his army, broadsides it, Nuwata goes down! Let's keep an eye on Yellow, we don't know what's going on over there, we ought to be able to easily switch, and how's Yellow? Yellow is- I would say Yellow is- Fucked? But I can't say that with complete certainty. Orange holding on. Blue. Blue and red. Oh my god. Blue's already at 1-1. Red at 0-0. And it looks like this is going to be the final push. We finally managed to break teal. Our units are at 0-1 as well. Actually, I can't say that. Uh, range 1 and then... Range 1 attack and melee 1 defense. I focus mostly... Ex almost exclusively on that. The only reason I upgrade my melee's attack in this fight... How is yellow alive?! The only reason I upgraded my melee's attack in this game is because, well, I had Death Knights and they have a life steal and it's based off percentage damage they do. Oh, but he spawns some Elder Wendigos! He might hold it, but Class Klasker, Klasker! Oh, teleporting literally three feet! Oh my God! Uh, Gray saying you are undone, Yellow. Blue holding on, but Blue doesn't have any ranged units. All he's got are these towers, so. The Ice Archers in the back are free to just absolutely murder his front lines, and what's this? The Portal of Summoning being used to summon in units from where? What units? What are we going to see? Two mercenaries! The most epic reinforcing ever, and I am forced to leave Teal once again because... God damn it, Green! And Gray still pushing, but oh, with these wolves... Oh my god! Maligant! Level 11, facing off again, Klasker, level 10, and he's actually killing off some of these units. These dire wolves are not taking almost any damage, well, comparatively, except for the fact that something in here is doing chaos damage. Cla oh, Maligant, that's what's doing chaos damage. Our town is 
Meanwhile, I get all up in Green's face and I say, you get the hell out of here, man. This ain't your land. And red attacking at all angles. Blue probably could have opened this door and swung around and flanked. But blue being forced to retreat a little bit into his base. He has nothing, but he does have all these healing tents. You can build healing tents with that peasant and you can go ahead and just spam that heal nonstop. Oh my goodness, what are we going to see here? He's trying to aim the hero, but it's no good. Gray still cannot break into yellow. Yellow with the most epic holdout ever is using a mana tile, a uh, mana ward right here to go ahead and regenerate. Oh, we're going to see some units turned into wolves again. But it's not... Oh, God. The siege will not end until the city is burned, saying the Sun King. The Sun King kind of RPing it up, saying, nope, I'm going to I'm gonna make you pay for fighting me. And uh, Teal sending in a few more Black Torrent? That's racist. I kill a bunch of green up here. Meanwhile, it looks like Red might be forced to retreat. Yeah, Blue has managed to hold the line and a massive amount of income for Blue. He's sitting at 601, and that's even with these upgrades going, and he's researching, I assume, more stuff. He's saying, thanks for feeding me, Red. I really liked it. It was very, very considerate of you. And oh my god, actually Wrath being a badass and building a watchtower right next to his base saying, I'm not giving up. I don't care that I'm dead. I'm not giving up because look at that. My healer, my, <laughs> my hero's not dead. Oh my god, trying to now break these guard towers, but they are kind of beefy. Teal now has enough time to go ahead and rebuild up. We'll see who's got stuff over here. Player 12, a lot of player 12 stuff. <laughs> basically for bases that weren't filled by other players we're seeing that they are filled or actually some bases are just empty uh because there just weren't enough people to fill them you can buy tie rocks that's a base that you can buy rather than take over looks like this got wiped out what's going on up here another base that is not uh actually being used i do remember that base being okay we see got this uh balua He's producing lightning stuff. That's awesome. Gray, great. Looks like Gray is making his final push quite literally. Can, ooh, can yellow hold? That's the question. A lot of these dryads will be taking extra damage from piercing. If he kills off all the support units rather than focusing on these disciples, he will be able to do the damage he needs. But meanwhile, another big push going in against Teal Orange, trying to take the absent Dark Green's base. Dwarven Axemen looking very badass with their custom skins. Let's go ahead and get a nice look at them. Ooh, yeah, look at that. They look awesome, don't they? Little hill tribe people. Look at their brawny backs and their tattoos. Awesome looking. Actually, it's a really awesome graphical quality, considering how old a game this is. I know, I know, I'm biased, but still. Let's go ahead back. And Gray is cleaning up. Cleaning it up. Is it going to be enough? Fine, Nuala, you want to head and use your AoE heal? I'm going to freeze your ass and here we're seeing my witch doctor like invulnerability giving my all my units a frost armor making them invulnerable for a little while oh yeah that's right make them pay the only problem is my hero <laughs> is the only one not invulnerable so she's getting all the attacks from the tower and the catapults and my hero is gonna go down but we're not gonna stop the push oh my god Klaskar in the back holding on with what Spirit wolves all over the place. Klaskar is not giving in. What is his money at? And oh, Klaskar must be feeling very angry. Master Warriors, he was going to spam these. They're such a good unit. Master Warriors are absolutely amazing. You can switch between melee and range, and uh, they're really cool. And that's that must have been why Rat said, No, my face. Cancel them all. Cancel them quickly. Increase the attack rate, HP, and movement speed of all units. Each of these bases have a special uh, thing that you can research. For example, my undead base has one that helps me research undead related things. And Orange now, on the move, has quite a few bases, quite a few stuff. Oh, he's spread all over the place. Yellow is still not giving up ice block. Ice lock. I'm just really impressed. What is this? <laughs> Red, stop bitching, dude. Why would he fight you out in the open if he knows he's going to lose? We can see Blue just majorly bump bunkering up. 
He's saying, oh, Orange, Orange is here now to hurt me as well, lol. Awesome. Red saying, let's fight one-on-one, -on -one. no towers. No, why would you do that? 2-3 for Blue's army, and uh, no upgrades for Red's. We're going to see so much bad manners in this game, guys. I am focusing more on the fact that this is a fun and well-made game rather than the people who play it. Because my hope is that you'll watch it and you'll play this with me. If you had ever like to play a game with me, by the way, feel free to message me on here. I will do my best to get in contact with you. Now, Orange is attacking. Woo! Anyway, I will do my best to get in contact with you and we'll all play a game together. Sounds like a lot of fun. And I do manage to finally clean up this base, destroy his core and stuff. I am absolutely done with his shenaniganry. Green's gonna take this base. His army is looking kind of strong. Got a lot of grunts, a lot of shaman. Shaman, I should say. And what's the Tower of Telen? The Militia of Telen. These bases are all so cool, aren't they? Oh my god. And... Yellow is actually being give, uh... <laughs> Hey, Gray saying, I've been attacking you for a damn long time. And oh my god, these Infernal Rock Golems are taking like no damage until they go back to shifter mode. And then they're vulnerable. But until then, we are seeing, oh no, is Yamato actually gonna. Okay, this is not bad though for our hero, Yellow. What we're seeing is that. What? Okay. What we're seeing is that these units, these Elder Windigo, have uh, better upgrades, and these Dwarven Axemen, almost everything that he's fighting in melee this time has heavy armor, and that's going to be doing a lot more damage. We can see just absolutely cleaning up. Yes, now Yellow has the chance. The army that could beat Grey, however, cannot... The army that can beat Grey cannot beat the army that Grey can beat. You're seeing a wonderful idea of uh, compositions and how those work out. <gasps> but a big push from Light Blue. Oh my god, he's got Raiders and Outlaws and... Uh, even a Null Overseer looking like a beast. Lots of artillery ready to just smash someone's face in. And, God, Green is just not going to let my base go. He just has something against Kellen. Selen, maybe? Yellow! Yeah, you badass! Oh, making so many wolves! Yes! Oh, no, but Gray is back! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he, we're going to see a giant sandwiching here by Light Blue. He says, fine, you want to defend once? When one place, I'm going to make you defend in all the places. And he has the artillery to make Orange pay in this fight. Oh, God, does he have the artillery. No upgrades as of yet for either Orange or Light Blue. I just want to point that out. Pretty sure. Yes. Oh, no. No, yeah, no. And Red doing tons of damage to this army because, well, he has ranged units. And Blue only has melee, and only a certain number of Blue units can actually fight there. But we can see Red and Blue just trading blows back and forth. Blue is already up to 3-2 on his melee. He focuses exclusively on upgrading his melee. And, oh, pushed into a corner. The Zypo of Zul Gash. Oh, my God. Literally, Klasgar is just trying, hoping against hope that he can hold on here. So much gold, feed me. Yes, but you don't have your master race anymore. Your master warriors. <laughs> Saying you are going to die. And I'm pretty sure. Uh, a big army from Orange pushes in and tries to take this back. He doesn't want to lose River Run, but I don't think there's much he can do against this army. Well, to be fair, neither of them have uh, upgrades, so it's difficult for me to tell who's winning. 1-2 from Grey. What are we sitting at? Uh, doop. 2-3 on our melee, and what about our ranged? Watch the real question, Lodge. I think I'm cleaning this up. Yes, our ranged have two. And what about your range? Two. So, actually doing pretty well. And oh my god, suddenly the corrupted Ents coming in from... That's right, the corrupted forest spawning the corrupted Ents. Who saw that coming? And they do a wonderful thing where they poison everything. I think even uh, poison trees when they die, make like a plague cloud. It's awesome. Oh my goodness. Yes, and Klasker comes back from the dead to say, no, not today. Not this day. What do we say to the god of death, A.A.K. Grey? Not today. Uh, but Light Blue, oh my god. Light Blue has so many bases, guys. One and... We got one. 
two. Two for sure. He's got this one now. Three. <laughs> Four. Five. Six. And, and six. He has six bases, as far as I can tell. Yes, six. <laughs> and... Oh my god, Brown, uh, Gray saying, the fuck did I just lose to you? I, no, that whole fight, all this time I've been pushing. Yeah, all this time you've been feeding him too. And uh, I'm feeling pretty baller because I've got a nice big army, good upgrades, and I'm thinking, I can do this. I can do this. And always leave some units back in your base, guys. I would always advise, uh, bring around maybe maximum five six control groups at most that's the most you can control effectively and make sure that you can retreat or attack or do whatever you need to do and still have units here at your bases it's very nice if you lose some units in your main control group you just go ahead and you know fill up at the tank you go back to one of your bases fill up at the tank and then leave shouldn't have attacked gray got attacked by light blue did you indeed really how did you build that army so quick Yeah, he's saying I have the entire bottom left corner. Meanwhile, oh god. And he gets out of there with the teleport. Forced to bring his army back. 3-3 three, three now. What are Red's upgrades? 0-0. Zero, zero, all 0. He's just focusing completely on spawning more and more units. He's got some Ballista and Arc Cleric. Oh, that is what? What an Arc Cleric. That thing looks like it belongs in uh, Warhammer. Like one of my tech priests. Oh, and, but we're going to see my attack here gets intercepted, and I try to back up a little bit and fight in this narrow hallway, thinking, that'll be fine. Only problem is, are my guys actually attack? Okay, so here's why I freak out and leave really quickly. I think that because these are immune to magic, that um, my magic damage death knights are not attacking them, but they are. And here I go ahead and use the invulnerability thing, but there are there are weak spots in my line. It's like ta maze tower wars. They just have to get through my units to my hero and start killing it. And I'm going to try to get out of there. Come on, use the frig- Yeah, there we go. We're going to use the horn. And where are the newest fights? Red going back to blue's base. These upgraded guard towers are doing lots of damage. Holding the line for blue, very luckily. And meanwhile, green- Green just clean it up, get some extra bases. Actually, some money, actually, because he wants more and more shamans. It's a shame how many shamans he has. And we see, oh, this is just like a, a gold farm. You want to find this later in the game as a player. You just want to, like, find all these elven soldiers. Just be like, oh, free fucking money. Oh, but, oh, my God, the Sun King being attacked. He's going to lose Zulgash. Oh, oh, that's where Mo that's where he's getting all these badass melee units from. These disciples, no. But, oh, my God, the Corrupted Ents do pit. They do, they do siege damage. They're so great for targeting down buildings. Oh, no. Our poor hero. I mean, at the end of the day, all of his upgrade buildings are here, and he's actually got quite a lot of stuff here. But these disciples have great upgrades. Come on. Oh, and it goes down. And it looks like, yeah, he's going to opt to just destroy it rather than let it live. And having just been in a fight with him, I am not inclined to let him live. So I'm going to go back and attack Gray in a second. But in the meanwhile, we have these Chaos Assassins trying to hold off Light Blue's army. It's looking really dangerous. Oh, it's not going to be enough, is it? Oh, we can see the lines melting so much. God. Looks like Gray is saying this is so gay. <laughs> Yellow is saying so gray. And my army is going to go ahead and intercept his. Thank God. I saw that mage and I went, how did you get my hero? I'm pretty sure my hero is right here. And bam. I have a slight advantage on the front lines because I'm doing magic damage against this stuff. Uh, and since I actually am attacking these infernal rock golems, yes, I have an advantage against them too, despite the fact they are some beastly, beastly melee units. And we're seeing lots of magic damage in the back from all of my necromancers, all of my banshees. They're cursing his army so that he's missing more. And I'm rezzing up his dead units as skeletons. You can see lots of skeletons going on. And uh, I think Gray is kind of feeling a little angry at this point. His army is not going to live. And I think, yeah, I've got some units up here that I'm going to send. 
Meanwhile, green, green with a big, big army. Grey Valley thought he could hold, but these Infernal Rock Golems are not invincible. They're just really strong. What's this down here? Orange. Sneaky little orange. We haven't seen anything from you in a while. But he's going to go ahead and take Albert Westler, Westler stuff. And the Sun King saying, man, fuck this. Gone. That's unfortunate. <laughs> and yellow just being like, I have won. I held on against all the old. And yellow. Yellow finally getting his own siege weapons as well. And uh, orange saying, well, that blows. I don't even know what he's referring to. Uh, and red seems to think and see okay wow that's a lot of dead stuff um i think red's sort of getting the idea that he might not be able to hold here all this stuff's dying constantly his hero's down oh my god his hero's dead so he has been focusing exclusively on building stuff rather than getting upgrades we can see his enemy so many upgrades let's just take a quick pause i'm assuming this is okay so he's got all melee these are both melee units 10 armor and 12 armor, 28 to 44, 36 to 48. What are we looking at for reds? Two armor. Okay. What else? Three armor. 24 to 27. Three armor. 19 to 24. Uh, anything else down here we should know about? Anything that looks... Okay. Two armor. 13 to 13 damage. This is the problem. He's not upgrading his... He's not getting upgrades whatsoever. And by the way, guys, in almost every game I'm ever going to show you, upgrades are really, really important. So please get them. It's not like the Warcraft 3 actual game where upgrades aren't pivotally important so much as the utility of your army and how well you can micro. But in this, they are. They make huge differences, and we're seeing that. We're seeing 10 armor and like twice as much damage. It's kind of scary. These arch clerics are trying to do as much damage as we can as he possibly can, but he said you're gonna get so much shit from that base light blue. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about at this point. Uh, light blue is down here. It looks like with all these advanced war machines and axemen and huntresses. Pink has that? Yeah, he's saying is that been your main this entire game? Yup. And gray never attacked you even once. Nope. <laughs> I got so lucky. I'm pretty sure, guys, rewind it and tell me, but didn't yellow attack gray first? Like, didn't he try to poke in and piss off gray? <laughs> and yellow's like, I don't even understand. How is that possible? And orange finally gonna take an extra base. Ogre mount is gonna get all, all the good stuffs. And meanwhile, we see my army is looking pretty vicious, guys. I only have two bases, okay? I only have two bases. I have Kellen and Dolph, whatever, Dolmort. Okay, this is a good place to stop. Uh, we can see yellow, whoo, is going to take a lot of red stuff right now. Oh my god, Demon Stalkers are great. I'm gonna get them next time. Anyway, we're gonna stop this in part one. Uh, probably gonna do this in three parts because it's a really long game. Actually, I might be able to get, let's go ahead and see if we can go a little bit further because I feel like I can fast forward through a great deal of the next part be, as the players wear, wear as the players disappear, you see less and less actual action and more and more building up of armies and then huge clashes. So I can fast forward through the building up and get to the clashes. And oh my god, still barely holding onto his base, but now red, oh my god, red is just feeding the ever-living hell out of yellow who has good upgrades and all the stuff on the front line actually taking reduced damage from uh, what we're seeing here. There's no reduced damage from Spirit Towers, of course. It's going to do full damage to everything. Oh, man. That is so good for yellow. I opt to destroy this and just leave a bunch of units here because I figure I know yellow's down here. And at some point he might attack and I'd like to be able to flank him. I'd like to send these units right out here and bam, right up into the base. If he attacks here or here, I can flank him. Uh, usually my army's out somewhere on this side of the map, so it would swing in and hit him. Bam, right here. What's this? Yellow, gonna clean it up and red doesn't really have any options left he's sort of just being held by light blue i mean by just regular blue and all oh, even the baby mar the murdoch tide runners hello. they are being brought out as well green just sort of milling about he doesn't know what he wants to do he's sort of at a loss uh, we're seeing some sun king's units still sitting there 
Like, uh, we were, we weren't sure he actually left. We thought he was coming back. So we decided to wait. And Yellow has actually are a very strong force. A very strong force indeed. Light Blue just positioning this here because he has so many things to spare. He can afford to throw away all day. He doesn't have to worry. And we're going to see me get flanked by this army in just a little bit. And I'm really not expecting it, so... And bam, me coming in, I'm like, yeah, he's got, oh, medium armored units. They're going to take reduced damage from magic. Fuck. Okay. And most of my army is magic damage. That's why I built these, the Defenders of Kellen, doing tons and tons of marble damage. And they have a bash ability. Um, you can see me throwing down uh, my magic immune thing. I'm not really thinking. I thought it would block them from magic damage, but it doesn't. It's just magic spells. And oh, God. I'm thinking, I can do this. I can maybe do this with my hero, with my with my abilities. I can freeze him. I can. Holy crap. Yellow. Not letting me out of here. I try to use that AoE ability, but it's not going to be quite enough. I'm getting attacked on both sides, and while my army is slightly more upgraded than his, it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Light blue massing up a big army. <laughs> Blue saying, dude, I asked for truce, and uh, you kept attacking me. Now I have one base. Oh, you suck. God, I can't believe you killed my base after all the attacking I did. Light Blue saying, Red, I'm sorry. Aww. I think Red's gonna rage quit here. And I am forced to retreat because that is too much stuff. No thing. And they're, it's all big, too. I think it was, like, very uh, psychological for me. I was thinking, oh, my God, these corrupted Eds are massive, and these Wendigos are huge. Like, you just feel not safe. And then they're throwing giant boulders at you. I dare you to try to feel safe when someone's doing that to you. Peace, Blue. Can you help me? Where, Red? So, we're seeing that in the moment, quite often, a player is more than willing to say, you know what? I've been fighting you all game. I've developed... A respect for you we have fought we've gone at it I I don't need to do that anymore and suddenly they'll just turn around and whoo they'll be buddies like immediately and you have this innate knowledge of what the other person is gonna do at any one time because you've been fighting them south of my base good money money uh, blue saying good I'm gonna attack him cool and he's gonna flank him he can't actually ally red and uh, Pink and I talking about the fact that if we could ally, we would absolutely demolish everything with our armies. But that's not what we're doing right now. And I think Green, holy crap, how many units you got? That's how I'd feel too. He's like, it's just nonsense, nonstop build up. Red would be having such an easier time here if he had any upgrades. But even despite the fact that we see uh, Light Blue doesn't have any upgrades, he is using activated abilities like Roar. Uh, Bloodlust is autocast, but he's using Roar, so at the very least he is microing a little bit, and Red getting cleaned up. Oh god, Blue stopping to fight Albert Wessler. Oh, he's not gonna get there in Red for time! In time for Red, I should say, rather. Uh, what is Green doing with units up here? Just kind of scouting, it looks like. Greater Spirit Wolves hanging out, saying, Blue, hurry, please help! And Yellow's gonna attack this ex <coughs> expeditionary force of Light Blues. I think light blue might be winning. Just because all I was hearing was non-stop stuff about how much crap he had. So I thought, he must be absolutely wrecking. So that explains this. I know light blue's on this side of the map since he took my base. I know where he is. Light blue forced to retreat. Light blue with a surprising amount of micro, actually. Like, he's all over the place as far as... Thing walk past the towers, it's fine. Just go, hurry, I swear to god. Light blue is all up in my base. I practically have another base in my base. But, oh my god, yellow and I at the same time are saying, Light blue? Light blue's bothering you? Let's go get him. Oh my god, light blue knows that there's a big yellow army coming down here. But he doesn't know that there's a big pink army coming here as well. And he builds all these little towers. When you take over a base, you get little units that can build towers to help you defend your newly taken base. Since you've probably destroyed all the other towers in your attempt to take the base. And they have like four different towers. You can build a watchtower, guard tower, spirit tower, or a forest guard tower. 
Uh, more for flavor, I believe, than anything else. Light blue. Oh my god, blue is getting fed so much on this. So at Okay, so light blue. Bam, getting attacked here. Bam, getting attacked here. Come on, yellow. Yellow, what's the matter with you? Oh, yeah, getting attacked here and getting attacked there. So currently light blue is fighting on three fronts. This is what happens when you talk, when you do too much shit and you get a lot of people talking about you. They're gonna be like, oh my god, Light Blue is so scary, I'm not sure I can win, oh, he's got so much stuff, and everyone's gonna go, oh, I don't want to fight a lot of stuff, but if you're currently fighting a lot of stuff, maybe I can get over there and, and kill a lot of stuff. Yeah, intercept reinforcements and stuff. And just stuff. Uh, <laughs> Light Blue saying, yellow wins. I don't think you understand how this works gonna die though so red bails out of the dame out of the dame light blue keeps sending units at me which I'm more than happy to take honestly at the end of the day it's very thoughtful of them sending huntresses from my own previous base at me you cheeky bastard Hold on one second, guys. I'm gonna do something inadvisable while you watch me just murder stuff. There we go. That should. Yeah, washing the hands. Okay. <laughs> That's a terrible noise. Alright, back to here. Light blue still sending more and more units, thinking that he could just swarm me under with more units. He's like, well, obviously I have more units than you do, so that means I win, right? Nope! Nope, nope, nope. I've got upgrades, son. Even my skeletons have upgrades. Are there any skeletons I can look at? I think I upgraded my skeletons so they get like an extra 100 health and all that stuff. Blue, still with one base, Merlockia. Locking it down, Merlockin' it down, but oh no. Oh, green. With a huge army. And a lot of it doing magic damage too. So, we're gonna see uh, all these footmen that I've been using just kind of melt away. And bam! Jade Spirit comes in. Ice Mage. Jade Sapphire. Uh, the Ice Mage is gonna attempt to hold the line. But oh my god, he's already dropping Infernals and stuff in my base. That's terrible. Yellow's gonna clean up and get a ton more of these bases. Oh, he's gonna just get all the light blue bases and hopefully destroy them rather than get them because you need the money more than you need the units. As we can see, after a certain point, <coughs> you have so many units moving at once that you just you get bogged down. You literally get bogged down. Uh, Orin's saying, "Hey, I doubt I'm gonna win," but he says he like he dotes it, so he like donuts it. Dang Grash level nine. Jade Sapphire level 15, I'm gonna start freezing these units. I'm trying to do some damage to them, but oh, just non-stop. I can't even activate, I literally cannot activate health bars right now. I think there's too many on the screen at once for them to register it. Yeah, I think it, like the health bars are just broken at this point. <laughs> are the health bars up here? Come on, where are we? Where are our health bars? Nope, we can't see anything. And it looks like I'm losing, doesn't it? It looks like I'm losing horribly, but then you look at the defender of Kalen on literally the front lines, and he's just... Yeah, boys. That's what I call a fight. Look at that. Into the breach, my friends. <laughs> Once more into the breach, my friends. Anybody play Neverwinter Nights 2? That was the best voice in that game, wasn't it? That, like, cocky rogue character. He's just like, yes, everything's just fine. Bully. <laughs> Once more. Oh my god, and this fight just does not end. Holding the bridge only because of my upgrades. Frankly, the fact that he is doing magic damage is tearing and doing some damage. I think that same defender of Kaelin is like right there on the front lines. And I just, come on. Come on, buddy. I just want to see you right there. Yeah, defender of Kaelin, you're good. You've still got 646 health. Any fights going on? No, but Yellow's getting a lot of bases. Is he taking them or is he killing them? Wisely killing them, getting all that extra money. But oh my god, so am I from this fight. Oh, you can take bases all you want. But fights like this are great for you. Look, I am 1,700 gold right now. Let's see what everyone is sitting at gold-wise. 194 for blue. Uh, 1,200 for yellow. 
eight for orange. Filthy Rat is getting kills, so we can actually see how many units I... Oh, and then just literally this entire bridge is filled with corpses. And that's even after I've resurrected quite a few of them. Even my Skeleton Warriors are kind of tough. 20 to 23 damage, 9 armor, 245 health. They are not one-shottable. They're, uh, they're significant in fights, especially in the numbers. So you consider the fact that if one of those has 200... What was that? 200-something health? Uh, I've completely lost where I was. This map is so big. All right, let's go back. Uh, 245, so that's what? 900... No, 490. 490 health for 75 mana. And it comes from their dead unit. So yeah, it's a really good deal. I would say skeletons are pretty fantastic. And they only give your opponent one gold, which is just fine. You gotta think about the fact, a 495, a 490 healthy unit would normally give somebody 10, 20 gold. No, you're just giving them two. And it's damaging them, it's great. Ah, nice big drink of water. As we can see, the Murlocs fighting wolves. You're never going to see this. Except in this game. Murlocs versus wolves, guys. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, man. This is just awful timing. This is just awful timing for our poor hero here. And now, Blue. Blue, what are you doing? Blue has got... Supply lines stretching out all over the place. What is this? He is wandering through the forest with all his Murlocs. He's attacking green, but he is not idle. And, oh, green. Green being a little rude. You guys want to rewind and see what that was about? <coughs> green saying, whatever. I'm just going to reinforce my base. I got enough stuff. I'll hold off your wolves. I <laughs> mean, your murlocs. Oh, there we go. Yellow saying hello to blue. All right, guys. We're seeing, I intercept the reinforcements for green because, well, frankly, guys, don't use the N-word or Karma will do this to you. Karma re will intercept your reinforcements. And we're going to go on to part two. And I hope you guys will join me for that because this was a really fun game and I'm looking forward to showing you the rest of it. Remember, this is called Broken Alliances, King Leopold's Broken Alliances. It is available for hosting on Make Me Host. So after you're done with part two, go ahead and hop on, make a game. Maybe I'll join. I'm going to be playing some games tonight, perhaps some Azeroth Wars. And, uh, well, you're going to be hearing this tomorrow morning, so it won't matter, but maybe I'll see you guys tomorrow, because I will play some games tomorrow. All right, let's go to part two.